Hello everybody. So today, we will be discussing how to prepare financial statements. So financial statements is actually the main product of what we do in the accounting process. So uh, before anything else, may I please request you to continue using handout 012. And in any case that you are not yet uh, downloading the handout, the link for the handout is available in the description box. Okay, so let's have a review first of the 10 column work. Worksheet. So this worksheet is what we did uh, last lesson. So let me remind you of uh, the things that we discussed last lesson so that we will be able to connect uh, the worksheet that we did in the financial statements that we'll be doing in this lesson. Okay, so the first two columns of the worksheet is the unadjusted trial balance. So the unadjusted trial balance includes all of the transactions na wala pang adjustments. Okay, so gagawa ka ng initial unadjusted trial balance just, just to check if the debits and credits are equal. Okay, and then we have the next two columns, which are all of your adjustments. So, parang siya yung magbibigay ng adjusting effect dun sa iyong unadjusted trial balance. We will be mixing the effects of the unadjusted trial balance and the adjustments, kaya magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating adjusted trial balance. The adjusted trial balance ang gagamitin natin para makagawa ng financial reports or financial statements. Okay? And then, the profit and loss column, yan po yung uh, panggagalingan ng ating income statement. And finally, financial position column, dyan naman po manggagaling yung ating statement of financial position or balance sheet. So, ang tulong po kasi ng 10 column worksheet, eh, pinapadali niya na gawin yung mga financial reports, yung mga financial statements na gagawin natin. Okay? So, I think we're ready to start with financial statements. So, let me define first with you what financial statements are. Financial statements are structured representation of the entity's financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity that is useful to a wide range of users in making economic decisions. So we just go back to the core principle or to the meaning, really, of accounting, that accounting is a service activity which provides quantitative information, primarily financial in nature, about economic entities, and gagamitin natin yung information na yun for decision making. Yung end product ng accounting, uh, yung talagang ginagamit natin product na binibigay ng buong accounting process ay ang financial statements. Okay? So, yun ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon paano gumagawa ng financial statements. So, we have uh, four financial statements and one inclusion of notes and disclosures. So, the financial statements include the statement of financial position, the statement of comprehensive income, the statement of changes in equity, the, statements of ca the statement of cash flows, and the notes and disclosures. So, we will be discussing these one by one depending on how it is being done step by step. Okay? So, let's start. Let's start first with the Statement of Comprehensive Income, or let's simplify it for now as Income Statement. It presents the entity's revenues and expenses during an accounting period that tells users on whether the entity enjoyed profit or suffered a loss during the period. So the Income Statement is the financial statement that will give us the summary of the revenues of a company and the expenses of a company. We will be comparing the revenues and expenses of the company and we will determine whether the entity has a profit or do they suffer a loss okay so let's start preparing the income statement let us use the profit or loss section of the worksheet okay to help us in preparing the income statement dun po tayo sa profit and loss column Tandaan lang natin uli nung na-discuss natin last meet, uh, last sorry, last video na yung credit nanjan po yung ating revenue which is sa ating example for landing on new travel services company yan po yung local travel fees earned at saka international travel fees earned. Tapos yung nasa debit naman natin yan po yung lahat ng expenses natin for the period like salaries, utilities, repairs and maintenance, organization, gas and oil, inter rest, depreciation ng ating mga assets, office supplies, and rent. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is, first step, gagawa tayo ng heading. 
Ayan. Lalagay natin yung name ng company, Landing on You, Travel Services Company, and then kung ano yung pangalan nung financial statement. Statement of Comprehensive Income. But for now, you can also use income statement. Wala namang problema. Kasi basic accounting pa lang tayo, so we can simplify things. And then, we should say in our financial statements that it is only for the month ended April 30, 2020 para nasasagot natin yung concept ng timeliness na yung income statement na to is only for the month ended April 30, 2020. Una natin gagawin ay lalagay natin yung revenues. E di kung ano yung nakalagay sa worksheet, yun lang din lalagay mo. Okay? So, unahin natin yung revenues. Local travel fees earned 73,160 and then international travel fees earned of 832,440. Nilista ko lang lahat ng revenue. Then you give the total. So, it will give us a total revenue of 905,600. As you can see, pareho yung total revenue sa credit side ng profit and loss. Tinan yung total ng credit side. 905,600. O, hindi din. That is our total revenue. Same thing that we will do in expenses. Ililista lang natin lahat ng expenses na nasa debit side ng profit or loss column ng worksheet. So, ganun lang din. Salaries expense of 190,000. Utilities expense of 12,000. Repairs and maintenance expense of 7,000. Organization expense of 250,000. Gas and oil expense of 10,000. Interest expense 1,000. Depreciation of your automobile 25,000. Depreciation of your office Office equipment which is 4,500 depreciation of your furniture which is 10,000 then your office supplies expense of 35,000 and rent expense of 25,000 which will give you total expenses of 569,500 okay so nakuha mo na yung total revenue nakuha mo na rin yung total expenses iko-compare mo ngayon gagamitan na natin siya ng formula na revenue minus expenses as we can see, mas malaki ang kinita natin kesa sa ginastos natin so, revenue of 905,600 minus expenses of 569,500 gives us a net income for the period of 336,100 so we enjoyed a net income during the period, so that's how you do an income statement you just list all the revenue and then you just list all of the expenses okay we're ready to move on with the second one the capital statement or the statement of changes in equity it presents the changes in the equity of the owner due to investments, additional contributions, net income or loss, and personal withdrawals. Remember po na ang capital ng owner ay affected sa mga ini-invest niya, sa mga additional na contribute niya, and kung kumita or nalugi siya during the period, and syempre minsan nagkakaroon din tayo ng personal withdrawals na ginagamit niya for personal use kaya nagwi-withdraw siya ng pera from the company okay so here's how we do it heading lang po ulit tayo landing on you travel services company then you write statement of changes in equity you can also simplify it you use capital statement don't worry about that okay and then you use the same uh, phrase for the month ended, April 30, 2020. Okay? So, yan yung heading. First step mo, lalagay mo ay capital mo at the beginning of the period, which was April 1, syempre zero pa. Zero pa yung kasi wala ka pang ini-invest eh, ba? And then, iaad natin yung investment na ginawa ni owner na si Yun Seri, which is 6 million. And then, iaad din natin yung na-enjoy niyang net income na 336,100. Sa natin nakuha yung 336,100, balik ka dun sa income statement na ginawa mo kanina. Yun yung net income mo na 336,100. And then, ibabawas po natin yung withdrawals by the owner na 30,000. Okay, sorry yung format ko lang kasi naka-negative sign siya. Pero actually, uh, pag sinulat nyo siya, dapat uh, when, we, uh, when we want to show a negative number, dapat po naka-parenthesis. Okay. So, perform mo lang yung formula, beginning capital plus investment by the owner. 
and then add din natin yung net income minus withdrawals it will give us capital at the end of the period which is 6,306,100 yan na po yung updated capital balance nung owner nung company okay let's move on to the next one the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, it presents the entity's assets, liabilities, and capital as of the period. Okay, so if you remember the accounting equation, A is equals to L plus C. Idedetalye lang natin yung mismong accounting equation nung company. Lilista natin lahat ng assets, lilista natin lahat ng liabilities, and lahat ng capital. Okay, so makakatulong po ulit yung ginawa nating 10 column worksheet. Tapos, punta tayo dun sa financial position column. Okay, so here's how we do it. Having po ulit. Landing on you, travel services company, statement of financial position. Pero kung mapapansin nyo po, wala na yung phrase na for the month ended. Kapag ka po kasi balance sheet or statement of financial position, magkano ang assets, liabilities, at capital natin at this point in time. Okay? So, hindi natin siya gagamitan ng for the month ended. Okay? So, pag gumagawa po tayo ng balance sheet, start tayo sa assets. Okay? Ganito lang. Kung paano siya sa worksheet, kukopyahin mo lang. Okay? Kasi updated balances na yan dahil galing yan sa adjusted trial balance natin. So, ganito lang. Cash of 4,180,456. We also have accounts receivable of 77,776. And then office supplies of 15,000 and prepaid rent of 125,000. Diretso natin. Automobile natin is 3,200,000. But remember, meron tayong contra-asset account na accumulated depreciation automobile, which is 25,000. So, ganito po ang presentation niya. Automobile na 3,200,000 minus yung kanyang accumulated depreciation na 25,000, you will report it at the carrying value of the asset at uh, as of. April 30, which is 3,175,000. Remember po sa ating uh, discussion ng depreciation, nire-report po natin ang fixed assets or property, plant, and equipment like our automobile, office, equipment, and furniture at carrying value. Okay? So the same thing that we will be doing in office equipment, our office equipment is 300,000 pero may accumulated depreciation siya na 4,500 which will give us a carrying value of 200 95,500. And lastly, we also have your furniture and fixture na 600,000. Ma-minus po natin yung accumulated depreciation na 10,000. So, magkakaroon po tayo ng carrying value na 590,000. So, yan na po lahat ng assets natin. Pag nalista na natin lahat ng carrying value ng asset natin, uh, we simply get the total, which will give us a total asset of 8,458,732. Okay? So, remember the accounting equation A is equals to L plus C. So, dun tayo sa kabilang side, the L and the C. Okay, next natin is yung ating liabilities and capital. So, ganun din ulit, uh, ilalagay natin yung lahat naman ng liabilities ng company. So, we start with accounts payable of 2 million and then we also have notes payable of 100,000 and then unearned local travel fees na 51,632 and yung interest payable na 1,000. Take note lang natin yung mga nasa adjustments area ha kasi baka nakakalimutan natin. Okay? And then lastly, syempre yung capital natin na 6,306,100. Saan po galing yung 6,306,100 na capital? Remember, gumawa tayo ng capital statement kanina or the statement of changes in equity. Yan po yun. Yung capital ng April 30 na 6,306,100. Diyan po yun ang galing. Okay? So, we will also be getting the total liabilities and capital. So, it becomes 8,458,732. Okay? So, as you can see, pantay po ang ating assets versus liabilities and capital because the statement of financial position is a detailed representation of your accounting equation. Okay? Nakakatatlo na tayo. Diretsa tayo ngayon sa 
Statement of Cash Flows The Statement of Cash Flows presents the entity's cash inflows and outflows on three major activities, operating, investing, and financing. Ang Statement of Cash Flows po ay ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dito, the company's cash. Ano yung pumasok na pera? Ano yung lumabas na pera? But we will be categorizing them into three, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Okay? So, discuss muna natin ano ba yung tatlong yun. Okay, operating activities includes cash activities related to net income. For example, cash generated from the rendering of services and cash paid for expenses are operating activities because revenues and expenses are included in net income. So, lahat po ng nakaka-apekto sa net income, basta affected yung cash, lalagay natin siya sa operating activities. Ang best examples po niya, ang best example niya, pag nakaka-receive ka ng cash kasi nag-render ka ng service, o yun, cash inflow yon from operating activities. And then kapag ka naman ikaw ay uh, nagbayad ng cash para pambayad ng expenses, o yun, operating activities din yun. Okay? So basically, kapag ang cash ay affected dahil sa activities mo in generating income and paying for expenses, then uh, it would most likely be an operating activity. Okay? Ang investing activity naman includes cash activities related to non-current assets. So, ang best example niyan, pag bumibili tayo ng equipment, syempre may lalabas na pera. Pag bumibili tayo ng furniture, pag bumibili tayo ng automobile, mga property, plant, and equipment po kasi yon mga non-current asset. So, kapag ka po non-current assets ang apektado ng ating cash activities, malamang sa malamang investing activity po yon Okay? And then lastly, we also have financing activity. From the word itself, pag sinabing financing, paano nagkakaroon ng pera ang company na hindi operating activity? Parang ganon, okay? It comes from conducting financing activities. Paano ko magkakaroon ng additional na pera? Parang ganon. Or kung may utang ako, paano ko babayaran? Okay? So parang ganon. In other words, financing cash flow includes obtaining or repaying capital, be it equity or long-term debt. So kapag nanghihiram tayo ng pera sa banko, o di kaya nagkakaroon ng cash investments by the owner, yun yung mga kaparaanan kung paano nagkakaroon ng cash yung company. So lalagay mo siya sa financing activity. Okay, ang pag-uusapan natin na method ng statement of cash flows in this specific lesson ay direct method. Kasi meron dalawang method ng paggawa ng statement of cash flows. Direct method sa indirect method. Yung pagkakaiba ng direct method sa indirect method, pag-uusapan natin siya sa fundamentals of ABM part 2. For now, dito muna tayo sa medyo madali na method which is the direct method. Pag direct method, Kung paano nangyari, ire-report mo lang sa statement of cash flows. Kaya siya tinawag na direct method kasi you report it directly. Okay, ang nakikita nyo ngayon ay yung T-account ng cash. So, lahat ng left side, lahat yan ng cash inflow, di ba? Lahat ng right side, lahat yan ng cash outflow, di ba? Kasi pag left side ng cash, di ba? Pag debit side ng cash, increase in cash, di ba? Kapag ka credit side ng cash, pag right side ng T-account, di ba? Decrease in cash yon Okay? So, sabi sa ating T-account at sabi rin sa ating financial statements, the ending balance of cash is 4,180,456. So, ganyan din yung gagawin natin. Okay? So, ang gagawin nyo pag direct method, iisa-isahin nyo yung transactions dyan sa T-account na yan. Okay? So, it's like this. Ayan. O, katulad nyan, yung 6 million natin, yan yung cash investment. Yung 100,000, bank borrowing. Yung 73,160, yan yung na-receive natin na local travel fees earned and so on so forth. So, depende sa mga activities, eh, lalagay natin yung detalye para makakategorize natin siya kung operating, kung investing, or kung financing. So, lalagyan ko siya ng letters na O, I, F tapos iisa-isahin natin bakit siya naging operating, bakit siya naging investing, bakit siya naging financing. Okay. So, ganito siya. Cash investment by the owner is a financing activity. Bakit? Ito ay kaparaanan ng company kung, par kung paano magkakapera. ba? Same with bank borrowing. That is also a cash inflow from financing activity. 
local travel fees earned naman, kumita ka ng pera kasi nag-render ka ng service. Dinala mo sila sa sa destination nila. So, operating activity yon Kapag ka naman ikaw ay nakareceive ng advance payment from customer, operating activity din yan. Kasi related din yan sa revenue. And then, collection of accounts receivable, yung customer mo na hindi pa nagbabayad sa'yo, na-receive mo yung bayad. And that is still related to your daily activities of a company. So, that's an operating activity. Kapag ka naman payment of organization expense, syempre expense yan. Pag payment of expense, operating activity. Pero, nung bumili na tayo ng office equipment, remember, kapag ka po mga property plant and equipment natin or yung mga fixed assets natin, di ba investing activity na yon And then, kapag, nung nagbayad naman tayo ng office supplies and prepaid rent, o di saan siya napunta, operating activities din, di ba? Uh, bakit? Magiging expense yan eh, di ba? Office supplies expense, prepaid rent, di magiging rent expense yan, okay? Purchase of furniture and fixture ay yan po ay investing. And then, payment of accounts payable on automobile ay investing din po yan. Kasi mga fixed assets po yung binili natin. Payment of salaries po ay operating. Payment of repairs and maintenance, operating. Pagka naman po uh, personal withdrawal ng owner, financing po yan. Kasi tinanggalan mo ng pera yung company na hindi naman expense. Okay? So, financing po yan. And then, payment of month and expenses. Siyempre, normal business activity yan. Magbayad ka ng expenses. Operating activity po yan. Okay. So, here's how you do a statement of cash flow. Ganun din po ang first step. Maglalagay ka po ng heading. Landing on you, travel services company, statement of cash flows for the month ended April 30, 2020. Okay? And then, uh, uunahin po natin lahat ng cash flows from operating activities. Lilista mo lang kapag ka po cash inflow, positive. Pagka po cash outflow, negative. Ganun lang po. Okay? So... Tapos, isa-summarize mo siya. Net cash flow from operating activities, paano po nakuha yan? 200,456. Ganito lang po yan. 73 plus 689 plus 116. Pero, minus 250, minus 200, minus 190, minus 7, minus 22. Ngayon, nagtataka kayo, bakit yung salaries naging 190? Uh, remember, sa ating transactions, two times po nagbigay ng salaries, di ba? And then, hiniwalay ko na lang po siya dun sa isang transaction na month and expenses. So, mas mabuti po kasi na talagang ikakategorize mo siya base sa kanyang account title. Para mas madaling maintindihan ng reader ng financial statement yung binabasa niyang cash flow. Okay? So, the net cash flow from operating activities is 210456 Ang next naman po natin, lista mo lang po lahat ng investing activities. Uh, lahat po siya negative Kasi naglabas tayo ng pera para bumili ng equipment, ng furniture, at saka yung pambayad natin ng automobile. So, ang net cash flow natin from investing activity ay negative 2,100,000. And then lastly po ay ang ating cash flows from financing activity. Investment by the owner, positive 6 million kasi cash inflow yan, nagpasok ng pera sa company. And then bank borrowing natin ay may pumasok din na cash sa company na 100,000. Pero nag-withdraw ang owner ng sariling pera which is 30,000 kaya siya negative. So, net cash flows from financing activities po natin ay 6,070,000. Tapos po, yung tatlong net yung tatlong net cash flow na nakuha natin on operating, investing and financing, isasummarize natin siya as one line item pag sasamasamahin natin yung effect niya. Ang tawag po doon ay net cash flow. Okay? So, 210,000 456 minus 2,100,000 plus 6,070,000 lalabas po yung net cash flow natin na 4,180,456 iya po natin yung cash at the beginning of the period which is zero po yun so the ending balance of cash is 4,180,456 kung mapapansin nyo po pareho lang po siya dun sa cash na, na, na nakareport sa ating balance sheet. Okay. So, ito po yung summary ng ating lesson. Ang revenue, ima-minus mo sa expense para magkaroon ng net income. Yan po ang statement of comprehensive income or simply your income statement. Then, 
yung beginning capital mo, i-add mo any investments and additional contribution by the owner. Tapos yung net income na nakuha mo sa income statement ay ilalagay mo sa capital statement. Minus withdrawals by the owner will give you the ending capital. Pag gagawa ka naman na ng balance sheet, lista mo lang lahat ng assets mo at carrying value. And then, lahat ng liabilities. And kung ano yung capital mo sa capital statement. Yun po ang capital mo sa balance sheet. And then, gagawa ka ng cash flow. Lahat ng cash mo from operating activities, from investing activities, and financing activities will give you your summarized net cash flow. Add mo yung beginning balance ng cash, which will give you your ending balance of cash. So, dapat pareho po yan ng cash na nakareport mo sa statement of financial position. Para mas maintindihan nyo yung lesson natin today, papakita ko uli lahat ng FS. Yun nasa left side natin ng ating income statement. Magkano ang net income natin? 336,100 na siya mong dinala sa capital statement mo. Nandun yung line item na net income, 336,100. Kaya may capital balance ka na 3 million, 300, uh, sorry, 6 million, 306,100. Yung capital mo naman sa capital statement, ang ilalagay mo sa capital balance mo sa statement of financial position. Kaya pagtingin mo sa balance sheet, nandun din yung capital na 6,306,100. And then, pagkagawa mo naman ng balance sheet, kagawa ka ng statement of cash flow. Pag tinignan mo yung cash dun sa balance sheet, 4,180,456. Pag tinignan mo yung cash sa statement of cash flows, ganun din. 4,180,456. Yan po ang pinaka main product ng ating accounting process. I hope that you understand how to prepare financial statements. Our next lesson would be the closing procedures. Thank you and have a great day.